You didn't think I was going to miss out on this game, did you? Grand Theft Auto V was released to great fanfare and great sales a couple of weeks ago. Unlike other games, you play as one of three characters, all of which you're introduced to somewhere in the beginning of the game. You start off in what seems like a bank heist that seems to go completely wrong. Someone gets shot and the screen sort of blanks out as people get arrested. Later on you play as Franklin, who seems to be a small-time hood in Los Santos. Through pure coincidence, Franklin meets up with one of the robbers in the bank heist, Michael. They end up striking up a friendship, and eventually you complete the trio with, well, Trevor. It's actually a long, convoluted story that's told very well. It's nice to know that Rockstar can actually tell a really good story while keeping up with all the chaos. Chaos was one of GTA's strongest selling points, and characters that like to be chaotic, or have chaotic tendencies, really help make the game fun. A lot of people really didn't like GTA 4's stoic Nico Bellic for some reason, and I think that because of this, Rockstar went back to the drawing board to make characters that people wanted to play as. There's something about a character that has remorse that makes people antsy for some reason in a game like this. Most people tend to play GTA because of all the other crap that people want to do that has nothing to do with the missions. But there is a lot of other crap you can do. GTA 5 is filled to the brim with content, ranging from normal missions to optional assassinations, jumping off buildings, flying crop dusters into cargo planes, and searching the bottom of the oceans for nuclear waste. Somehow, Rockstar manages to keep all these ideas interesting and feel like a part of the story. But for me, the best part of the game, clearly, is the heist. Heists are long, multi-part planned missions that are supposed to result in big money payoffs. The idea is this, survey the area, make a plan, choose the plan that's worth doing, choose the people you want to come along, gather the necessary equipment, and then execute the plan. While it seems limited in choice, I'm glad there's actually some choice in the first place. I also love how there's some random elements in the heist, such as your hired guns accidentally getting killed or crashing during the heist. This really varies the gameplay and the payoff quite a bit. Back from San Andreas are the leveling mechanics, although they seem to have lowered them down a bit. You don't have to micromanage every little thing like eating. Each characteristic can be built up by doing activities. For instance, stamina is built up by just running around fast, and accuracy is built up by not only shooting in missions, but also going to gun ranges and practicing. It's a little slow, but most leveling is usually a grind, which I'm used to. There aren't many things that are wrong with this game, but hey, I'm supposed to find them, aren't I? First off, this game is buggy. With a game this big, you can't help but see a couple of bugs every so often, but it does lead to one of two things. Either hilarious results, like a submarine spawning in the street, or game breakage, such as not being able to continue because a cutscene is supposed to start, but you have to lose the cops first and it won't let you move because the cutscene is supposed to start. This can obviously be fixed with patches, but in some ways, I'd like Rockstar to fix the game-breaking bugs and leave the hilarious ones in. I would have liked to have had the chance to have more heists that benefited the team as well. I know it's all story-based, but the heists were probably the most fun of all the missions. I think this was the game's strongest selling point, and more, shall we say, optional heists would have made the game last longer. Some people might complain that this version of San Andreas is still smaller than the original San Andreas game, 
And I like to think that it is. Content-wise, I would have liked to have gone past what I would call Santa Barbara or the Mojave Desert. But I also thought that San Andreas was too big having to explore Las Venturas and San Fierro. Maybe we'll get those cities in an expansion pack, but for now, I think the area the characters are in is big enough. As of this review, I've also not gone into one of the parts of the game that was supposed to ship with it, GTA Online. I might review that as a separate mini-thing, but I would have liked to see the evolution of the online play beyond what I saw in GTA 4. However, this add-on is also free, so it's not detrimental to the value of the current package. So, I killed a lot of people, I robbed a whole lot of places, I dabbled in the stock market, I trained in yoga, I played a whole lot of tennis, and I sank in a submarine. That's a whole lot of stuff. But is Grand Theft Auto V worth your cash? Grand Theft Auto V is the return to form that people have been waiting for. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's still able to weave a plausible story where you can still have a lot of fun being the bad guy. There's a lot of varied content, the story is great, and the city of Los Santos is actually fun to be in. It was worth my 60 bucks, and I think you should go spend that kind of money too. I've heard that some people went bananas about this game, just because it didn't have a perfect score on other reviewer sites. Well, to tell you the truth, the game's not perfect. It's just great. Grand Theft Auto V is one of those games that keeps me wanting to go back for more, even though I've already beaten the game, and it's a long game. Whenever something like this hooks me, it must be special. Now, if you pardon me, I think I gotta go back and replay some of those heists. It's time to go in, guns a-blazing. Take a drink. No, I don't, I don't, I don't smoke it anymore. It interferes with the speed. No, it, it...